Hello and welcome to Guider's Gun Guide. I am Ben Guider, your host. Today I am closing out a review uh, that has been long overdue. I've actually had people asking about it. Um, when I started this channel, I did not anticipate this would occur, but one of my most watched videos is the unboxing of this air rifle, a Daisy Powerline 901. Uh, between it and a, a few other more budget ended air rifles, um, these have become the most watched videos on my channel. And so I owe you, the viewers, some more information about this, uh, this air rifle. Some of y'all have been asking, hey, how's it shoot? What's its accuracy? What's its velocity? What's that? What's all that information? Looks great. What's it do? So, uh, so let's talk through this. I've actually been out here. Um, let's see, it's 3 p.m. now. I've been sitting in this chair and working the uh, working my my sh uh, shooting here for oh I don't know since about 10 a.m. and all on this one gun. So uh, let's start off with uh, the setup here. Uh, some of y'all eagle-eyed people will notice there's a white square here that is not part of that rifle. Uh, so that is a Walmart gift card. Cut off a piece of it to put a shim here. Um, this. And the reason for that is when I would tighten down these scope rings, they would end up canted a little bit. They they weren't they weren't centering on the on the air rifle very well. And I don't know if that is the if I can attribute that to the rifle or the scope rings, but I did try multiple scopes, scope rings, and it was a recurring thing. So take that information for what that's worth. What's sitting on top of here is a this is a Hatsan. Uh, Hatsan Optima 3 to 9 by 40 adjustable objective scope. It is made in China, as is, if I'm not mistaken, the Daisy. Yep, both of these are made in China. The scope here is one of the two least expensive adjustable objective scopes, variable power scopes, uh, on the market. The other one being the Winchester 2 to 7 by 30. Two, if I'm not mistaken, but this is the cheapest that I found adjustable objective variable power comes in around I want to say it's neighborhood of thirty forty dollars somewhere like that on the uh, Rainforest website pretty decent scope honestly uh, Glass is good. It's accurate. The clicks are great. I couldn't be happier with it I mean for a budget scope on a budget air rifle. It's great, but that's what's sitting on top of this very stable very sturdy uh, very happy with all this. So this air rifle, um, very easy to pump, uh, very easy to use. It's one of the easiest pumping air rifles, most comfortable pumping air rifles of all of my uh, multi-pumps that I have. I'm happy with this from an from a ergonomics perspective. Works great in that way. The shooting results. Uh, the reason it's taken me so long to get this out, aside from other things I've been doing, trying to start a business, all this sort of thing, is I've been having a heck of a time trying to get this thing to really find what it likes. And so today I came out and I decided I was going to go with, um, if I can find it at Walmart, okay, uh, Cabel or Cabela's or Academy, that's what I wanted to test. Uh, Gamma Red Fires, um, 7.9 grain crossman premier hollow points, 7.4 grain crossman destroyers. These are boxed up. I did shoot them, but I've got an open can over here. Um, let's see what else. So yeah, my goal was to try to find, you know what, someone's going to go buy this at, a, at their local store, whatever. I want to see what pellets they can reasonably, they can shoot from it and what they could expect from that. Here's the results. It's uh, very interesting. So all of this, that uh, that's five yards across from Premier Hollow Points. Five yards. <laughs> uh, the gun did not seem to like these at all. I, I kept shooting, kept shooting. After it, they started to kind of tighten up some, so I thought I was good. And so I went over here. Tried to do a whole 10 shot group all by itself. That was the best group across from Premier Hollow Points I could get out of this gun at 10 yards, or I'm sorry, at five yards. 
then I moved on over to destroyers. Again, not doing too great. Some grouping occurred, uh, not amazing. So I said, you know what? It's a daisy gun. I've got daisy pellets. Let's assume it's built for daisy. Um, this is the sampler pack. They call it dial a pellet. Um, it, uh, uh, it has wad cutter, pointed, and hollow points. So, the group starting just above my finger here, these were the daisy hollow points. Uh, the group, as I was letting in the barrel, uh, it, it produced two different groups, but it seemed to settle in right here. Then I went and fired the daisy pointed and produced this group. Again, all, both of these are at five yards. So the, these are both the same weight pellets, um, and they basically were grouping in the same spot, hollow point and pointed, uh, at five yards. So I was like, okay, great. That's looking good. Went out to, I went out to 10 yards with the daisy hollow points and the daisy pointed. And you see my group opened up pretty good there. Tried them some more, still opened up. Um, so moved on. And my determination was whatever I could buy at a, um, at a store, Walmart, what have you, Crossman or Daisy Pellets, this gun just did not seem to like them. Um, beyond about five yards. Um, I, I, I've got some data. I, I think they might do a little better later, but I don't know. Based on some shooting I did before, um, I went inside and I grabbed RWS Super H Point and JSB RS pellets. I remember these were, uh, I had data that said these were actually really well, uh, really good shooting pellets. So at 10 yards, RWS super point. Okay, so to give you a reference, this square is one inch across. Um, so about a one inch group at 10 yards, and that's one of my better groups for the day. JSBRS here, and then I moved out to 20 yards, and the JSB seemed to be about the best grouping at 10, so I gave him a shot at 20. And you see keyholing immediately. I only threw three pellets down range because they immediately were keyholing. That means they were destabilizing uh, between 10 yards and 20 yards, somewhere in there. So tried out the RWS. Not great again, right? There's at least one, one or two keyhole starts there, kind of spread out, not looking good. Okay? So I decided, you know what? For the heck of it. Let's go to 15 pumps, and we're going to find out what velocity it can do at that, at that level and what it does to accuracy. Now, caveat to all of this. DAISY clearly states in its manual, 10 pumps max with this air rifle. Follow the manual, okay? Do not try this at home. All the standard disclaimers apply. You can, uh, you can reduce the life of your seals. You can cause damage to the air rifle. You might even cause a very dangerous situation to yourself or others around you if you violate or exceed the uh, recommendations of the manufacturer. So do not do this at home. If you do, you're taking on your own risk there, okay? Um, I'm not responsible. Uh, I'm just, I took the risk. I made that decision for myself to see what would happen, okay? Um, this could it just, you know, I may have irreparably damaged this air rifle, um, so I was willing to take that risk, damage it, probably destroy the warranty as a result, okay? There, you've been fairly warned. Um, I'm not a lawyer, but uh, hopefully that's appropriate indemnification, right? Again, using the RWS, here is, this is the one flyer. They grouped up here, got three down here. Uh, that's at 15 pumps. And then 20 pumps, again at 20 yards, it tightened my group back up. What that means is it stabilized the pellet. The pellet's velocity 
the pellet didn't like flying as slow as it was flying, I guess. And um, the uh, uh, the pellets, if I if you can get the velocity up on this gun, you actually can get close to a 20 yard, about one inch group. Not terrible, not great, but you know that might be enough for you to do a little pest work. Um, obviously, anything inside of 20 yards, 10 yards, 15 yards, this gun is with that accelerated velocity, you're going to be doing pretty okay. So you say, all right, Ben, what uh, what type of velocities did you get? Um, I'll share the uh, I'll share I will share the charts, uh, post those and everything of that nature. Um, but uh, on average, uh, this gun is producing somewhere between 685 feet per second. Uh, that was with the 7.9 grain um, Crossman Premier hollow points. Uh, up to with the Daisy pellets, uh, we were seeing uh, 693, 689 uh, feet per second. And then the Super, uh, Super H point and the uh, RW, uh, RWS Super H point and the JSB Exact RS um, got 709 and 705 respectively. So when I went to 15 pumps, this went from 709 to 761. There was an additional 60 feet per second by adding five pumps. That's very interesting about this gun, and I had a hypothesis that that was going to be the case, um, and I'll tell you about that in a second. Um, when I went to 20 pumps, I got 789. I think I had a couple 790, 791 feet per second with this with this pellet in this air rifle at 20 pumps. So my hypothesis hypothesis about this gun was that all the internals are going to be very similar, if not identical, to an 880 or the 1977 XS, the Winchester 1977 XS, which are both rated over 800 feet per second air rifles. And I was looking at it, and here was, here was the big key difference that kind of clued me in that there was going to be some, some additional pump capacity on this air rifle. Okay, the sweep volume. There is very, very little sweep volume here. The um, the arm of the uh, of the 880 seems to swing further, which seems to get a larger volume of air here uh, in the in the chamber. At least I think that's what's happening. The result is each swipe, each pump is actually pushing a little more air per pump in an 880 or a 1977 than it is on a 901. That's the hypothesis, okay? What that means is that at 10 pumps on an 880 or a 1977, you have more air compressed in the same volume valve area out of 10 pumps, right? Because each pump is pushing a little more air than this 901 is. So based on that, I assumed that this could probably take a few more pumps and get a little more velocity, and which it did. At any rate, um, my final conclusion about this air rifle, it's comfortable, it's ergonomic, it's sturdy, it's stable, it's well built. I love the plastics. Um, I never thought I would really say that about plastic air guns. I hate plastic air guns, but the plastic used in this air gun feels like quality. It's good quality uh, plastic, it's stable, it has a good grip, it feels nice. Um, this is accurate enough out to about, at stock, out to about 10 to 15 yards, this will get you about a one inch group with an appropriate pellet. You might be able to find the better pellets. If I were to do some additional testing, I might be able to find a pellet that could even do better than that. But from what I've been able to determine, this seems to be about a half inch to one inch group gun out to about 15 yards. Okay, beyond that, it starts to open up pretty good. Um, so, unless you're willing to take those, those, those risks. So that's it. That's up to you. So at any rate, 
uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, unless someone else has any good ideas about something else they'd like to see, see done or tested about this air rifle, uh, this will be my final review of it. So uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and we will see you next time.